Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I would like to thank, uh, to, to give my a great thanks to Samos Manakic to invite me and give me the chance to meet so many interesting speakers. I learned a lot by myself again. Uh, and I know that here are pyramids, it's a proof, it's reality. But I did not know that the energy of the Ragnet tunnel is so strong because usually my bedtime is 10 o'clock in the evening and I never expected that I could be able to do a conference at 10 o'clock. And also it's very strong the energy because otherwise you would not be able to listen to me at this time of the evening after so many interesting speeches. So of course as it is my fourth time here as a speaker, it is not possible to bring every time everything new. So maybe uh, some of you who attended last year might see a few things which they saw already, but be sure that I have also uh, a lot of new uh, artifacts. So let me start this time. Uh, when I was invited uh, three years ago, the first time, uh, and I saw the list of the speakers, so many international uh, scientists, I, I thought I have to try to bring something special. And uh, as I am working with a German friend who invented uh, a few years ago a new sensational technology, I asked him to make me a scan over the Sun Pyramid and that I had also the approval that this is a real pyramid. So I presented these scans at the end of my speech, but I don't know if you can stay up so long until the end of the speech I tried to show you a new scan which he did even he was very busy, he could not make a detailed scan but he did a pre-scan over the area of the moon pyramid and the area between the sun and the moon pyramid. Future the other pyramids so that we can give Timothy uh, better uh, advices where he might be able to find entrances to the other pyramids. The scan we did uh, three years ago, a detailed scan over the Sun pyramid, and here a pre scan we did over the Moon pyramid just on the surface because to do a detailed scan we have to go down meter by meter, not missing any tunnel or any room, if there is a, a one. You can see here the black lines. These are tunnels which are 160 to 170 meters under the surface. That means, for me personally, this must go back really a long, long time. But as they are already aged 18 to 30,000 years, it's also for me understandable why there are tunnels 160, 170 meters under the surface. This is another overview scan. You can see that there are a lot of anomalies also on the surface of the other mountains or pyramids, but there are also big empty rooms under the earth also in a deepness of approximately 150 to 170 meters. This tunnel is very interesting because it goes in this direction and I think this is the direction to the Ravne uh, labyrinth. Maybe uh, Timothy can uh, give me more help. But there is a connecting here and this one goes directly to this one. There is another connection to this pyramid and it goes also inside the moon pyramid. This big empty room is approximately 400 meters under the surface. Here we did an overview scan of a tunnel system. Of course here the Radne tunnel system, but as you can see, 
it is much, much more under the surface in the area of Isoko. And good luck, uh, Sam. I think the next 50 years you might be very busy to discover all these uh, tunnels and uh, pyramids.
you have these surface also artificial structures going deep into the earth. Of course we don't know what these circles have to do, but it looks like a stone circle, right? So this is definitely an artificial structure. And it is a metal structure. Of course nobody would believe us, but we are used to that. <laughs> Then we received another Google Earth picture with this kind of strange structure. From the first view immediately it looks like artificial. And this is the underground structure of this formation. These are so called Anomalies, that means empty spaces, exactly in this area where you saw the two Google Earth pictures before. And this uh, structure is also in the Pacific Ocean, but very close to the United States. So the question is, is this a new construction or does it go back to an unknown uh, constructor? This May, I was invited to Japan for a conference. The conference was scheduled on 13th of May. And I was planned to return on 14th. A few days before the conference, they called me and they asked me, I have to stay one more day until the 15th. And they explained to me that Japanese shamans called them and they said, the 14th is a very special day and there is a rock formation in Japan and one big rock formation is called the, the activator and they told the organizers that they, have, they should bring me to this rock because I have the key to activate this stone. So at the first moment, I thought they are joking, they are kidding to me because I have no key to activate a rock formation. But when I was there and we did the ceremony on the 14th between 8 and 10 p.m., very strange things happened and I found out that the key was not myself but I brought the key with me and that was a very special uh, sky which you can see after my speech I put him here on the table and this sky is really some, something very special I would say but to the crystal skies we come later so when we arrived uh, on 14th at the area of this uh, rock formation First of all, we visited this place. And when I saw the presentation of Hannah this afternoon, immediately it looked for me very, very similar like this structure. But Hannah's were in uh, Czechoslovakia and this one is in Japan. It's quite a distance in between. But it's not the only one. Uh, here on this picture you see the grand-granddaughter of the famous emperor, Japanese emperor, Tenno, uh, the, um, uh, sorry, it's, it's a little bit too late, <laughs> uh, Meiji Tenno, the grand-granddaughter, Princess Nakamaru. Uh, she visited with us this place and you see her sitting here on top of a 25 meters stone structure made out by huge big stone blocks but some of them are going so precise into one into each other that for me it looked like Sacsayhuaman or any other South American big stone structure or even the structure I had the uh, honor to visit with Sam here in Bosnia on top of this structure 
There is a carved stone formation you see here behind uh, the princess, which looked for me immediately like a parable antenna, but it is big and made out of one big block of stone. Here again the princess in this kind of antenna. And you see here just a part of this stone structure with big, big blocks made. Definitely artificial, not natural formation. Another structure. And some of the stones have some very strange symbols uh, in carved. And you see here how precise the blocks are together. So again, an unknown stone uh, megalith uh, area. And this time in Japan, I didn't know about this before, but I was really surprised. Uh, this is a picture on top of the pyramid. Uh, the shamans and uh, the, the priests, they arranged uh, this ceremony and they asked me to put the sky in the center and when we were standing on this rock and they did the ceremony suddenly I had the feeling as the whole uh, tower is moving and I really believe me I got immediately a shock because I thought if this tower falls down we are dead definitely but then I looked down and, and I saw that the, the formation is not moving, but I had really the feeling as I was moving, then I thought maybe this is the jet lag or so, and I turned around to, to, uh, to the shamans, and one of them told me, do you also feel it? And I said, what? He said, there is a feeling, the energy gives a feeling like the whole rock is moving, and that means the, the, the uh, activating uh, is successful. So, I don't know about this. There are many of you, they know much more about this, but it was a very, very interesting experience for me. And the next thing, because we talk about pyramids in Bisoko, uh, Manuel Palacios, <coughs> is an Ecuadorian researcher and we are very good friends and we exchange always information. He sent me photos of an area in the Yanganatis. This is a very, very dangerous area in the uh, Andes in Ecuador. First of all, it's very hard to go there because uh, there are, there's completely jungle and uh, rivers in between. And they found in this area a stone formation. You see him here on this stone formation. Here you see that from top to down there are stone blocks precisely one meeting the other one. So for them, for Manuel, he informed me for him this is definitely a pyramid. So what my last information is that after this so-called Ecuadorian pyramid appeared on the internet, uh, the government sent an archaeological expedition there and the result when they visited only this wall, one day trip, the result was this is natural. So Manuel contacted me and asked me can you ask your friend if he could do us a scan over this pyramid? So I asked him, I had to wait a few days until he could skip uh, a few hours for me. And he did a scan over the exact area which we got on a Google Earth picture. The result we got, we cannot say if it's definitely a pyramid, but it looks like on one side. But what we could find out is that there are rooms inside, so that means it is a pyramid. But it's not only one pyramid, there are three pyramids next to each other, connected with a huge tunnel underground, and very close by 
There are several tunnel systems in cross formed with rooms underground. In this area, there are every year every years, uh, expeditions because they think that in this area of the young artists there is the famous Atahualpa treasure, the Inca treasure. I do not think that this formation has to do anything with Atahualpa or with the Inca history. I think this, these three pyramids and the underground tunnels are connected with a very, very old, unknown civilization of South America. Because the area in this uh, Yangaratis now is wild jungle. That means they wouldn't have built pyramids in a jungle area that must have been completely different in the past. So especially in South America also, but not only, even in Europe, I think we can find a lot more unknown uh, building structures. Here you can see that this is definitely not natural. <coughs> and we have the approval through the scan that there are rooms inside. Then we keep still in Ecuador because from now on I show you artifacts because many researchers are studying the structures and the buildings. I prefer more the artifacts because I think the artifacts can give you even more information about the civilization than the big monuments or structures. This picture was made when we visited the area in Lamana, which is in uh, Ecuador, uh, 1984. There were a British company did in this area gold digging. And one day, engineer Sotomayor, uh, an Ecuadorian engineer, found exactly in this place, you can see here still the opening of the tunnel. And when they opened the tunnel, they found inside over 300 artifacts which do not fit any known pre-Columbian culture. That means the oldest Colombian culture is the Valdivia culture, which goes back to 6,000 years, meaning 4,000 BC. And this Valdivia culture has a very strong connection with the Japanese oldest culture, which is the Chomon culture, which also goes back about 6,000 years. That means for me, there must have been a connection between Japan and uh, South America already 6,000 years before. The most in, one of the most interesting pieces we found there is this big stone block. We call one of the most interesting artifacts I ever saw until now is this 27 centimeters high pyramid with an inlay of an eye. The inlay is grey white, the color of the eye inlay. You have 13 steps and it looks exactly like the one US dollar note pyramid. And when I presented this in conferences and it was shown on internet, I got a lot of uh, reports saying be careful, this guy is an Illuminati because he always shows the pyramid with the eye. I only can tell you that for me this pyramid is so old, older than any organization like Illuminati or uh, Freemasons or anything else. But what I think, this symbol was, is one of the strongest symbols. That's why they use it now for their own uh, things. If you put this and other artifacts found there in La Mana under ultraviolet light or black light, the inlays are shining very strong, especially the eye is shining very strange and very strong. On the bottom here is a daylight 
photo and this is on the black knife, but it's very difficult to get a good picture. On the bottom of this small pyramid, you have an inlay in small gold plates of the Orion star constellation and unknown writings. This unknown writing, some of these symbols I found the day before yesterday when I visited Timothy in his uh, laboratory and he showed me some of the artifacts with his unknown writings. Some of the symbols are confirmed with this writing. And there was only one man who could translate this writing. He was the president of the German Linguistic Society, uh, Professor Kurt Schildmann, and he he said he could decipher this writing. He did not say he could translate it. He said he could, could uh, decipher it. And he said, this meaning is the son of the creator comes. And we found the same unknown writing on stones in Ecuador, in Colombia, in Illinois, in Closel in France, in Calabria, in Malta, in Turkmenistan, and in Australia. So that means there must have existed a global civilization, and if it, this writing goes confirmed with the writing which we have found here in the Ratne Tunnel, then you know about what age we are talking. This is a stone which shows how you should hold the pyramid. You, here you have the eyes. The pyramid stays on your right hand and you put your left hand on top. And this stone shows you the action of the pyramid. You see here a man sitting and holding the pyramid. From his eyes are going rays out to this two boat people on his head he has a flat helmet and a kind of an antenna going up to this symbol. This is the helmet which was found there too, but you can see that something is missing here. Another very interesting uh, artifact is this big uh, chain cup with 12 small cups. A very symbolic number, 12 plus 1. On the big cup, you have a precise star constellation inlay work. And on the small cups, you have numbers which are looking like the, the uh, Maya numbers, but they are a little bit different. And the big cup is inside, completely magnetical, outside, not only in the center of these three big stars. And maybe Paul can tell me later on what star constellation is here on this cup. Every geologist will tell you that it's impossible if the J cup would uh, uh, have some uh, iron material in, in, inside the material. It must be magnetical from both sides. This here, not. We did tests and it's confirmed. Here you see a close-up of the big uh, cup and what I got uh, information is that you can see here on the cup the Orion belt and swirl, Pleiades, Sirius, Aldebaran, Betelgeuse, Procton and Canis Major. And also this cup, the inlays, in our, uh, if you put black light or ultraviolet on, the inlays are shining really very strong. Here you see a close-up of the small cups. And each one has a different size, but we fill them completely plain with water and we put them carefully in the big cup and the big cup also was completely plain filled with water. So even the, the and the work of these small cups was very, very, very well done. Here on this picture you see also a jade plate with the same star constellation like on the big cup and two people looking with their eyes up to the sky. 
Also, this the inlays are very special on the black light. This is a very interesting hard-formed stone, but here it's broken, and also uh, the stone changes the color from light brown to black, which is also not normal in the nature. And you can see, uh, you can see here a face. You have here the two eyes, you have the nose, the mouth, long hair and a bird. So many of my friends, when they saw this picture, they said it looks exactly like the Shroud of Turin. But now if I would be a populist and I would like to make a big story, I would say we found the Holy Grail because a big cup and 12 little cups and then we have a hard formed stone with a face which looks like the Shroud of Turin. But for me personally, all these artifacts are much older than 2,000 years. On the reverse side of this stone you have a spiral and a triangle or a pyramid and also here the center of this is very strong magnetical. And also the mouth of the face we, 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 we tested with a small magnet and when we put it the small magnet in front of the mouth of the face on the other side, it was always going like it was talking, like it looked like somebody is talking to us. Very strange magnetical effect. Then one piece, the head of a cobra, and we know that the cobra didn't exist in South America and all the other artifacts, so this collection is not accepted by the official archaeology. The cobra has 33 lines, 32 plus one dot, 33, and left side, right side, seven dots. So seven and 33 are uh, very interesting numbers. Uh, and uh, I got information from an Indian professor. The cobra has 33 lines and uh, in the Hindu mythology there are 33 gods and goddesses. The seven circles represent sub-chakras in yoga. Here you can see how the inlays are shining under black light or ultraviolet light. Then this snake with inlays points. First of all, it is a masterwork made out of jade, very big. And all the inlay points are also uh, illuminating under black light. Then this is the Kundalini. And of course, Kundalini is not connected to any South American culture. You see the sexual energy goes up on the reverse side and is ending up on the third eye here. Then this stone helmet, you can put it on your shoulders or you can lay down and put your head inside. It's made out of granite and it has inlay points and some acupuncture experts told me that these are exactly the acupuncture points. So again, we have here an artifact which has nothing to do with any known pre-Columbian culture. Also the points are illuminating on the black light. And here you see the owner of this collection now, Herman Villamar. Uh, how you can use this stone helmet. Then this spiral form in a plate uh, made us able to lend 40 pieces for the exhibition because when we were there 2000, uh, 2000 and I saw first time all these artifacts you can imagine that I was excited and I asked the owner can I lend 30, 40 pieces for my exhibition next year. And he said yes, but I have to ask Luis Viracocha, the highest of the Ecuadorian indigenous people,
and next evening we had again a meeting and Luis Villacocha came and first of all when he asked if, if he uh, when when Herman asked if he can lend us some pieces he said no way these are for us very spiritual artifacts and we will not allow that you bring these artifacts to other countries so again you can imagine how I was feeling then and I started talking with Luis Villacocha about many things about an hour and after one hour he brought a little magnet on a string and he asked my four friends I was with four friends there he asked the first of them to hold this magnet in the center of this spiral and when he was holding it in the center suddenly the magnet started round turns big and bigger until outside the plate and then it was turning like a papito mobile. So he asked the second, the third friend and then he asked me to hold it over. And you see here a photo. I was holding it over the center of the spiral and it didn't move. And I was pushing it and it didn't move. And I pushed it again and then I was laughing and I said, Luis, it doesn't work with me. And he looked at me and he said, they should try again. So I asked him, can you try again? And the first friend, it moved, the second, the third, and then again me. So I was holding it, this was the second time, because it took so long time. I was holding it, pushing it, holding it, it didn't move. And then finally I gave up, I said, Luis, can you tell me why it doesn't move? And he just looked. And he turned around to Herman and he said, Herman, you can give him the, the, the pieces for the exhibition. Don't ask me why. But the strange thing is... And this was the time I did the exhibition because I was a big... I was, I was skeptic against all these things. And at this time, 2000, when we went there, if you would have talked with me about esoteric and some very strange things, I would have told you, please leave me alone. But I had so many experiences, so... But still I say, there are things which I cannot explain, I just accept it. So this was the success that I could get, the pieces for my exhibition. Oh! Oh! Sam! <laughs> You know what? Out of about 50, uh, uh, we asked a, 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 a design office to do us samples for our logo for the exhibition. And you wouldn't believe it. The logo for our ex exhibition was exactly this spiral on a black ground. So, I don't know why, but it brought me luck. So this one is also a small J plate and has seven different uh, colored uh, circles. And a few months ago, I got a telephone call from a Russian physicist, numerologist and mathematician, a lady, uh, Mrs. Svetlana, and she told me I saw a presentation on YouTube and I saw this uh, Ecuadorian plate and it fits exactly my research of doing a matrix for persons, a personal matrix for persons. And she asked me if I can send a high resolution picture of this uh, plate, which I did. And she asked me, can I make you your uh, matrix and I said yes what do you need my name and my birth date and later she sent me my matrix and she was very very surprised because she said it's incredible but you are the first one with exactly the same colors in your matrix and exactly with the same thickness of each circle so I asked her what does that mean? She said, I cannot give you any answer.
So this is a pyramid made out of stone. Also found there, you have here again the pyramid with the eye. You have here spirals and you have here unknown symbols. Here another stone from the same collection. Again with the pyramid with the eye. And here the three stars which are exactly located like the three pyramids in Egypt. And then they found many, many of ceramics which also do not really uh, connect any pre-Columbian culture because here this looks like uh, Asian style, also the snake around the mouth, the eye forms are also not really North American indigenous and I heard, I got also the information that this position is called as Padma Asa in yoga in India. The Lord Shiva is a Hindu god and he has a snake around his neck. So the question is, how did those artifacts come to Ecuador? Here another one, sitting in the lotus seat. Then this one, very interesting, because you can see here the third eye. And in Ecuador, in a country where it is really very, very hot, it's a very strange uh, closing. This one, for me, first of all, it looks a little more Japanese than any pre-Columbian culture. And this is also a very interesting one, because you see here, two persons with elongated scarves and this ceramic is from the bottom this size and it is one ceramic and it is completely hollow even here the round circle so this is really a masterpiece of ceramic so now we go to China to the pyramids I can go here faster because you saw already some of them. The next pictures I got from my friend Andre Desmet. He visited many of them. Even he, he, he was walking up of, on some of them. Even it was prohibited. And he even had the chance to fly over this with, with what? With the small with an ultralight airplane, he was flying over the pyramids and he did great photos. He is one of the most interesting uh, researchers and I'm just wondering why he never gives this, uh, this conference speech. Here himself in front of one of these pyramids. And you see, they look like the Sun Pyramid. Right? And this is a model of the biggest one. And this photo I got from a Chinese archaeologist from southern Mongolia, round pyramids. And in this area they found thousands of jade artifacts. They say that this is from the Hongshan culture which is dated archaeological wise about 4,000 years old but even 4,000 years ago doing such great jade works they must have known or they must have had a kind of special technology some of these artifacts are very very strange and this bronze was also found there and you see here the, it's called Hongshan culture and when I saw this picture I thought this is an Egyptian bronze because it looks exactly like Isis. That's why I hear a close-up and here you see the original Egyptian Isis. This is Mr. Che. He is a Korean researcher and I met him personally this summer, first time, but we are in contact already over two years. He is a great researcher of an unknown culture. They found in China and in Mongolia many graves, 
mostly Korean uh, archaeologists, and they excavated hundreds and hundreds of 30, 40 centimeter big jade figurines, but they are all black painted. And the interesting thing for me is first, they cannot, uh, they could not find out yet what kind of color they used. They couldn't find out uh, technically wise what kind of color they used to paint these jade uh, artifacts black. But when I saw sy uh, symbols on some of them, like here, it remembered me immediately on the Moais on Easter Island. Because you know that they are now excavating deeper and deeper many of the Moais because they are going deep into the earth and most of them they have on their back symbols and some are really same like on some of these artifacts. So you have now the Moais black because it's vulcan stone and you have here jade artifacts but also black. Why somebody paints beautiful jade into black? And you have the same symbols. So maybe for me it is, it is a point that the, the really never existed continent Mu really existed. So now I show you several of these figurines. Like you have here ways also with these symbols found on the Moais, also here and here. And again, always mixture also between human body and animal head. And then, people. But if they were so great artists, why did they build, uh, make figurines with very strange faces? Here you see male and female. <coughs> this looks Mongolian or Chinese. This also for me looks more Chinese. This with the bar. Here you see uncolored. Some of them they found uncolored, but most of them are black painted. That's another uncolored one. This is another one. A turtle with a human face. And this one, the next one, were for me very interesting because if you compare the human skull here and the skull of the person with the knife, it looks for me like a giant who killed a smaller person. This is the lady. <laughs> they also knew how sex is going on. <laughs> then animals. Again, skull. So that means skull always played a very important role even for cultures. Uh, the the Korean archaeologists are dating these artifacts back at least 8,000 to 10,000 years. Again, elephant sitting on a skull. Then this for me looked like the North American Indian symbol. The turtle also in many cultures played a very important role for a long life. And this skull was also, it's made out of uh, jade and was also found together with painted black figurines. Uh, 2001 I was able to present six 
crystal skies in my exhibition. All of them were checked by the most expert worldwide, Dr. Rudolf Distelberger, who was the director of the treasure room of the most famous museum in Austria. He checked already 1984 the Mitchell Hedges skull, where many people are saying or writing that nobody can make this skull, uh, that alien must have brought it uh, from somewhere. That's not true because he checked the Mitchell Hedges skull and he was a very, very, very nice man. He didn't say this skull is not old. He just said, my opinion is the Mitchell Hedges skull is made end of 19th century in Ida Oberstein in Germany. And National Geographic uh, ordered the most famous Chinese uh, crystal skull maker to do the, exactly the same skull like the Mitchell Hedges skull out of one block of crystal with even with the jaw taken away. And he made a copy where you cannot see which one is the original or the copy. But the next skulls are definitely old. This is smoke uh, quartz skull. This is uh, aquamarine. This is uh, from Mongolia. It's uh, jade. And 2004, I had the exhibition in Switzerland, and a famous and great Russian shaman asked me if she can visit with me after 9 o'clock p.m. when everything is closed, the exhibition, and she will tell me some more information on some of the artifacts, which she did, very interesting. And until this time, I didn't believe that Christmas cards can give any information or something like this. But when she meditated in front of this skull, uh, she, were, she was talking in a, in a language which I never ever heard before. Then she was talking in Russian to the translator, and the translator was talking to me. And it was November 2004, end of November 2004. And she said, the first information is for me. You will, in the very new future, you will excavate many things on the earth. But you have to leave the earth in a good condition. At that time, I had no idea of excavating something because I'm not an archaeologist. But with the new technology of my friend, we have now several places where, where we are really starting soon excavations. So this information was quite right. But the second information was, in a few days, a big wave will kill hundreds of thousands of people and all of you know that on 26th of December 2004 the big tsunami in, South, uh, in Southeast Asia killed hundreds of thousands of people. So there is reality that crystal skies are keeping information or it looks like that they even can look into the future. The next one is from Brazil. Lapis Lazuli, and this one is from the Ukraine, it's quartz, uh, rose uh, quartz. This photo I received uh, from a lady from Mexico, which is connected with 3,000 strange artifacts, where you will see some of them later on. This crystal sky, very interesting, and for me it is definitely a very old one, and it's hollow inside. This sky was found in Bavaria in a wood case and the wood case in a leather case. On, on the leather case was written Otto Rahn. And Otto Rahn was the SS archaeologist who was ordered through Himmler to search in Rennes Chateau and in Montsegur, the Holy Grail and the Ark of the Covenant. This box was on the last train leaving Berlin in the last days of the war, direction to Praha, but the train didn't arrive in Praha, it stopped in Bavaria. And a friend of mine found also the transportation list, and on the transportation list, 
the owner of this box was Henry Himmler himself. That means that this crystal sky was in the ownership of Henry Himmler and I brought it to my friend Dr. Distelberger. He checked this crystal sky. He said it's definitely handmade. And as Otto Rahn was researching in Rennes Chateau and Montségur, I'm quite sure that this crystal sky, 9.2 kilo heavy, was in the ownership of the Knight Templars. Uh, my friend told me that uh, with a physicist and another friend, they did laser light and sound tests with this crystal sky. And he said, if I would have had this experience by myself, I would have thought I am going to crazy. He said, suddenly they saw pyramids and they saw a man on a camera, like a hologram, writing in direction of them and then writing on the side. And the second they saw was a lady sleeping and suddenly she opened the eyes and she looked like shocked and then she disappeared, but the lady looked like South American. And the strangest thing he told me was when they started with the, with the laser light on the bottom of the sky to the top of the room, suddenly they saw like, like uh, a banner with a very unknown symbols writing. And he said, weeks after, suddenly he got a little pain in his, his left eye and then he saw in color the same banner running in his eye. So he said he really thought he's gonna get crazy and the last time it happened he took a paper and he was writing these symbols and I will get them after coming back and then I asked many of the writing experts if we can find out what kind of writing this is. So that means, again, this was for me an approval that crystal skies do have information or do have uh, films or whatever reality or can they see into the future, but it would be very interesting to do another test. And I received an email yesterday, he promised me after coming back we can drive to him and he asked his friends to do a test because I want to see that by myself. Hopefully not getting the same trouble later on. This guy is here, you can see him later on, this is the one I brought to Japan. Nassim Haramein got this sky, the, the famous uh, physicist in Hawaii, we are good friends. He got this sky from the last owner because the story says, and it's not a story, every owner who bought this sky got heavy trouble. And the last owner was a young guy and he wanted to get married. And after buying this sky, one month later, his fiancée passed away. So when Nassim brought this sky two and a half years ago to Germany, to a conference where we met again together, he gave me the sky and he said, you can keep it here whenever you make uh, again an ex ex uh, exhibition, you can display him. And I immediately told him nothing. I don't want to owe this sky, I keep him here, but we promise now that we try to find out where this sky belongs and then we bring him back. Because this guy for me must have been in a grave because geologist's friends told me that he has a crystallization on the sky, which means he must have been long, long time under the earth. And this year in springtime, when I was, no, last year, sorry, when I was invited uh, to a conference to Paris, there was also Humbert's man, the elder of the Mayas. And when he saw in the evening this sky, he was really surprised, kind of shocked. He did a meditation and then he told me, this is one of the most important skies on earth and it's definitely older than 10,000 years. So I would appreciate if Hannah could give me more information because I think she knows more and even maybe there is someone else who might be able to, to give me some information about this guy. But I can say 
He has a strong energy, that's what I hear. I don't feel it because he is staying in my sleeping room. But many people tell me that he is very strong, so I don't feel it. So after the conference, I put him here so you can see him. On his top, he has the ink carving of the feathered god, Quetzalcoatl, that's why I call him Quetzalcoatl. And Humbert's man told me also that the ice, the jade of the ice, this is the same jade like they found some artifacts in the grave of Pakal. Now we moved to uh, Sierra Leone, uh, to Mali. Uh, Professor Pitoni, a real great Italian geologist, he passed away unfortunately a few years ago. Uh, he provided me this photo and some artifacts from Sierra Leone, which I show you following. Uh, he follows always legends and mythology. And when he was working in a, in a diamond mine in Sierra Leone, he got information about a legend that a princess did something wrong and God made her into stone. And there is a huge half uh, granite, half portrait lady in a rock formation. So he went there and he visited the place and you can see here exactly the face, the breast, until here. This is definitely because he was a really great geologist and he said, I could not go directly to there, but I could see definitely that this was man made, a precise face, everything. But the size from here to here, the man-made formation is 140 meters. So it would be even quite very difficult for us in our days with high technology to do such a precise half portrait into a rock. Here this is a close-up of the face and you can see exactly the face. But what, what some specialists told me and I can see it by myself this looks more like South American or Asian, but not Black African style. So that's another hint for me to the direction of Atlantis. Then, while he was uh, excavating diamonds at the diamond mines, as a geologist, he always took from the finding position of any artifact, organic material. So he found many, many sky blue stones. That's why he called these stones sky stones. We did analytical uh, check at the Natural Historical Museum at the Mineralogical Department. These stones are artificial made. We could find out all the materials except the color. The color is no way to find out what color they used to get really sky blue stones from big size to small size. And the legend in this area says that they are Muslims. Allah was angry with some of the angels and he petrified them and threw them to the earth. These are the so-called nomolis which I show you. He took the sky and threw it to the, to the earth. These are the so-called sky stones. And he took the stars and threw them to earth. These are the diamonds which were found there. So the sky stones, we did analysis. There are 13% of material which usually does not exist on our earth. They only find it in, on meteorite impacts. This is one of the nomolis. They were found in, in uh, different layers from age dating from organic material, 2,000 years the youngest one, up to the oldest one, 17,000 years. Very well done. 
But again, you know that I'm researching worldwide also giants and we found already broken bones from a 7.6 meter human giants in Ecuador. Again, when I heard Hanna today, I got very big ears because I'm from Austria, but I didn't know that giants exist in Czechoslovakia. So very interesting. But you see here, you see the elephant and the man sitting on the elephant. If you compare the size, this guy must have been at least six, seven meters. And you know that any country, any tribe, everywhere you find the legends and stories about giants and little people. Here are also some very strange ones. These are made out of very heavy granite found in a deepness organic material but that doesn't prove definitely that they might not be older or younger about approximately 5,000 years with a strange head and human body like the reptiles here again and here again they are approximately 50 centimeters in size and very heavy, but wonderful uh, stoneworks. And this one he found in an area with organic material, in the deepest area, organic material age dating was 17,000 years. It's made out of sandstone, it looks for me like a T-Rex, like a dinosaur. And it was making a sound. He told me when he found it, it made a sound. But it was closed precisely with this stone and he opened it and he found inside a small metal ball. So I brought the metal ball and the stone, the little stone, for analysis to the uh, institution, to the laboratory. Next day, the professor called me and she said, Mr. Thomas, somebody made a bad joke with you. I said, why? She said, because the metal ball is chromatic steel. And you know, chromatic steel was found first in Austria, 1904. So how can come a perfect, precise chromatic steel ball inside a statue? So next morning, I called Professor Pitoni and I said, Professor Pitoni, we have a problem. He said, what? I said, I did an analysis on the stone ball of your, stat of your figurine. He said, oh, what is it? I said, you won't believe it. It's chromatic steel. And chromatic steel was first time made 1904 in Austria. He was laughing and he said, Klaus, I'm a geologist. I would not open a statue because of a strange sound, if I wouldn't have done a special check before. And you see here the x-rays he did before opening, because he didn't know that there was already an opening here, because it was precise, perfect, closed. So he sent me the x-rays from all sides, and you can see that the metal, metal ball was already inside the statue. This is a site. Uh, X-ray, you see here the steel ball, and, you see, and here on this picture he saw that there was an opening here already, and he asked a restorator to open him exactly here. So that means here we have a chromatic steel ball, approximately 17,000 years or even older, and that's again. Interesting today what Timothy said, that they found very old stone with a kind of metal inside. So again here we have a connection and so it goes with artifact and artifact. I always say, I try to find, I am digging for answers, but I always find new questions. So that's why it's interesting always to talk with people like you because someone has this idea, someone has this idea and I think if we put all together
but also together with the official scientists, because we need them. Now, this is very interesting. In the 1870, uh, a French researcher found deep underground the first of the so-called Chakmore gods. You see here an original photo of the finding and the, uh, the official archaeologists in Mexico and the international archaeologists are saying that here in this area they were putting the hearts when they were taking them out from the body they took the heart up there and that is the function of the god Chakmol. But now I show you many pieces from one collection. About three years ago I got an email from Mexico from a lady and she wrote she is sending me some pictures but I should keep them top secret. For me several photos from someone I don't know meaning top secret somebody wants to send me a virus and I checked each photo several times with a virus scanner and then I opened them. And when I saw the first 10 photos, I thought somebody is cheating me because I always refuse to talk about UFOs and extraterrestrials because I always said as long as I do not have a real approval, I will not talk about this. Then I stick on unknown ancient type civilizations which definitely existed. But Valerie already told me so many things and I know that he is one of the most serious researchers. So these artifacts, so it makes me already coming to the site where I think that they, they might have been here. <laughs> also, my friend Michael, they all talk about uh, Anunnakis and everything. I was always a little bit behind. I said, as long as I don't have the final agreement, I won't talk. Now they make me believe in it, okay? And the artifacts. But the artifacts were so good that when I showed with Nassim Haramein, together we showed two years ago in a conference in Saarbrücken, the first pictures, and Nassim made the physical uh, ex explanations. I asked, please stop all cameras, don't make photos, because I know we get trouble. So someone filmed it and he was putting it on the internet and you cannot imagine what happened. Even the, the greatest German UFO freaks and alien freaks were writing these are liars, they, they, they think we are stupid, they show us new made artifacts and they may try to believe us that these are original. Later I explain you more. So, here, this lady, after I got the first 10 photos, I was also unsure, I, I thought that's impossible. Then I asked her, can you give me more photos? Because she told me that a farmer found in one tunnel on his ground over 3,000 artifacts, 2,500 stone artifacts, from small one to big one, and 500 molded artifacts from small one up to 50 centimeter statues, molded. So I asked her to send me some of the small molded ones with the material check. It looks like they are really old and original. And from two stone masks, which you see, I show you some of them, uh, stone masks with uh, mosaics on it, and they used for gluing organic material and Nassim Haramein sent two samples to the university in Tucson. The result was one must age dating 8,600 years plus minus 100 and the second one was 12,400 years plus minus 100 years. So if the uh, analysis is correct, we have already a real confirmation that the pieces are old, but still nothing decided that we try to do in the next few months to other institutions. We want to be sure that we get the same result and then we can say that these artifacts are at least 
older than 8,000 years. So you can see here one of these so-called Chuck Moll gods holding something on his breast. Here this one, it looks like, I would say like a computer showing a face on his stomach. And a Russian scientist found out that the best condition traveling in the space would be in this style of sitting. Here another one, here you see exactly, he has something on his stomach, but not hard, but something like really looks like a small television or whatever. Here another one, and look at the clothes and the seat. This is made out of stone. This is also stone in carving. This one also. Three thousand pieces. Here looks like a UFO. Unknown symbols, human footsteps. Michael, maybe they saw the giant footstep in South Africa. All of these pieces are molded and for me it looks like flying objects. Here you have close up. You, you can see even person with big eyes looking out of the windows. Here you have a sun eruption and a triangle in the sun. I got this photo three years ago and some of you might have seen a NASA photo on the internet with the sun with a long dark triangle in the sun. This one again on top a UFO. Here a guy with very strange big eyes. Here again looks like a UFO. Here one of several uh, ink carvings where the person seen always is raising the left hand. And I always say I'm happy that they raise the left hand because if they would raise the right hand I would have a problem in Austria. <laughs> Here you have the sun eruptions. Here something for me it look, looked like a wormhole but Paul told me it's uh, not a wormhole. This is very interesting because it looks like something is going direction to the earth because here it looks like the earth and here you have a flying object, object in front and one following it, here another one and here again you have the famous position with the rising hand. This is a close-up of the one I told you before. Exactly on the internet, you, you, we could see a photo. Ah, now the battery is gone. Maybe we try this. The sun with the sun eruption, and here the triangle. And uh, Valerie told us in his conference that the sun might have been a kind of stargate and it looks like here the UFO, sun eruption and exactly this triangle was on a real sun photo 
from NASA about one and a half years ago. So what does it mean? No idea. There's another strange one, again with the sun eruption and a flying object. And here the guys are looking out of the windows. This a star constellation. Maybe one day someone can give me an explanation for it. Might be seen here on this star map. You can see all the kind, different size, different material, most of them made out of stone. 3,000 pieces. The farmer is afraid, that's why everything started with top secret. The farmer is afraid when the government gets a knowledge about this collection, they will take it away and they might take this land also away because there are two tunnels which he didn't open yet. And maybe in December I can fly with uh, Andre to Mexico and we are allowed to document all the 3,000 pieces and if we have time enough, maybe we are allowed to open with him together the second and the third tunnel. Then we would have the final uh, approval. But for me, approval enough because some of the pieces have gold inlays and precious stone inlays. And if a farmer, I don't think he would be able to make 3,000 masterpieces. It would not be possible. This is one similar mask where we did with two of them an age dating because these are semi precious stones glued with the organic material on a stone mask. And this is, for example, the reverse side of the one you saw the front side. And you know from Star Wars films, transportation from one dimension or star to another star, people would be sleeping inside. This one, it's about 50 centimeters high, stone with inlays, and many of the inlays have the body, the hands positioned like Egyptian mummies. This looks like one of the famous Nazca lines, a spider. This is another mask, front side and reverse side. It's another front side and the reverse side. Again, the left hand. And here, like a comet coming down, flying object. This one a sitting, a kneeing guy with a kind of baby on his hands. Yeah. Another mask and the reverse side. This is for me also very interesting because it shows here the flying object. This guy showing it looks like he wants to protect something in his hand of this uh, comet or whatever is going into direction to here. Maybe, I made a joke, I said, maybe they show us on these artifacts that when really a problem is coming and a big impact is trying to catch the Earth, that they are ready to help us. But interesting is that many of these figurines, they are dressed like the Mayans. This is very interesting. This is a precious stone showing the third eye, but again, very big eyes. On this one, elongated skull with a baby also with elongated skull. This one is 
very, very interesting because again, you see here, even the mask sitting in the position of Chuck Wall in something inside and again raising the left hand. Here another one. Then one thing which looks like a sarcophagus. You see? I mean, you have to agree. They look too good to be believed. That's another sarcophagus. Here you have step pyramids and again the Mayans they had two tribes the Eagle tribe and the Puma tribe and on this one here you see the, it looks like the Eagle tribe so now the real question is are these pieces or these artifacts or at least 8,000 years old but then the history about the Mayans and especially, interesting, the history, the age of the building of the Mexican pyramids must be also older. So que question, no answer yet. Here you see several of the artifacts, gold inlay ice, precious stone inlay with gold, so a farmer in Mexico wouldn't uh, be able to, or if he would be an incorrect man, he would break up the precious stones and gold and would sell it, but he doesn't do it. This one again, strange person with elongated skull and big eyes. Another one. This. I love him most of all because here you can see even the closed, the glass here of the helmet, long big eyes holding something in his hand and here a flying object. Now we change and we go to Colombia. In Colombia Professor Jaime Gutierrez has the most incredible collection uh, in Colombia. This, we call it the genetic disc. It is made out of a material which is called lutite, or in English also radioite. Uh, it's a very hard stone, but usually the structure is like leaves formed. So that means it's very easy to break. You can see here on this arrow that a little piece is, was broken away and even on other parts pieces were broken away. So why this is so interesting? It is not accepted as this disc and the other artifacts I show you are not accepted as archaeological findings because they do not fit any known pre-Columbian culture, so they must be new. But the problem is, 2001 before we put those artifacts to the exhibition, we made material check at the Natural Historical Museum uh, Mineral Mineralogical Department and Dr. Rudolf Distelberger was with us and after Getting the result of this material, he told me I'm happy that I'm here today, otherwise I wouldn't believe in the result of the material. I said, why? He checked all these pieces and after checking he said, I cannot tell you who made those artifacts, I cannot tell you how they made the artifact, and I cannot tell you when they made the artifact, but the only thing I can tell you we are not able to do the same artifacts with our high technology with the same material today. So that means we talk here again about very strange things. Why? 
First of all, they were found in South America and Colombia. They do not connect any known pre-Columbian culture. That means they should be at least older than 6,000 years. But then the next question arises, how could they know how human egg with spermia and without spermia looks like? And especially this one, I think it was used for medical purpose because you can put in the round form, you can put this finger and then you hold it with the two other fingers and it's like your own fingers, you can reach any point precisely. And such a form, making today out of uh, Lydite would be quite impossible. It would break immediately. All these instruments for me looks like medical instruments. And each one, as I said, is perfect done. When Professor Gutierrez showed some of these artifacts in a university in the United States, a young student told him, Professor, isn't it reality that you are the most famous industrial designer in Colombia? He said, yes. He said, couldn't it be that you made this design? He said, young man, young, young man, if I would have this know-how, I wouldn't be just the most famous industrial designer in Colombia. I would be the most famous worldwide. Here, each artifact is precisely done. This is very interesting because you can see here the baby coming out from the mother and the, I always forget the name, the, what's this line? Umbilical cord. Hmm? Umbilical cord. Yes. Is around, oh sorry, is around the neck of the baby. That means, for me it looks like this artifact was done by a high civilization for a lower civilization to show them already for what they should use it, this instrument to cut this line when it when there is a danger that the baby, that the baby gets strangled. The next one we call it the, the birth uh, spoon and in Vienna we, when we had the exhibition we asked several uh, specialist doctors uh, if they could hold this thing and if they think it might be helpful when the baby has problems to leave uh, the mother's body and they tried it and finally this they said you can here only put the dome inside that means you can hold this, this instrument only with the two fingers that means you are not able to, to use power you can only use it very very softly and that means some of the doctors said for us it looks even more safe than the instruments we are using in our days and again here you see the baby is coming out from the vagina this is the, the mother's body so it means showing a lower civilization for what they should use this instrument and again these two pieces precisely done then we move, we stay still in uh, Colombia but we move to uh, Via de Leva uh, there is a very old monastery, Santo Eke Homo Monastery built 1620 in an area where you find millions of fossils even dinosaurs, eggs and so on this is Professor Jaime Gutierrez. They used many of the fossils for building the monastery. And you can see here the pineapple, petrified, cultivated fruits and vegetables they found there. Here you see an avocado. Here is a close-up. 
Here is oh, here is mice petrified. What does it mean? How old are these vegetables and fruits? Millions of years? If they were found together with all these fossils, I think they must be many million of years old. This is Padre Huertas. Padre Huertas is professor for archaeological uh, plants, ancient plants for modern plants and anthropologists. And he checked all these artifacts by himself and he said these are 100% petrified cultivated fruits and vegetables. In his hands he is holding a cocoa bean and a banana. Here is a close-up of the cocoa bean and the banana. Another fruit, several fruits found there. And also they found petrified human bones, which are bigger than our bones. This human must have been the size of at least 3.5 to 4 meters. And also in the same region, in the same area, they found this stone with a petrified human hand and a petrified human foot. Age dating, archaeological age dating of the stone material in Colombia is 120 to 140 million years. So what do we have now? We have human hand and human foot petrified in stone. We have cultivated fruits and vegetables petrified and age dating goes far behind our time. Here you see the hand. In the same area they found petrified bones with very strange animals. Some of the animals they have arm rings, you can see here. And it's an unknown animal. Nobody knows what kind of animal this was, especially this one, which is, is exactly looking like the other ones I showed you before. But this is the skull, and you can see that it has exactly the form like the little petrified uh, animals. But the strange thing is that these artifacts have wonderful encarvings in petrified bones and the petrification was done already when the encarvings were done. That means an unknown animal petrified with encarvings. Many questions of the official age of humanity. Here is a close-up of this skull. And here is a view from front, but it shows exactly, it looks exactly like the little animals on the other petrified bones. This is a flat with a tail, and it looks exactly like the stones found in Ica, the stone collection from uh, Dr. Cabrera, stones which are showing dinosaurs and human together and so on. In the same area there is a so-called Infernito, 1500 years old, connected with the Muisca culture. It is definitely an archaeoastronomical site. These were all phalluses, but the Spanish conquistadors, they broke most of them, and I personally think that this area is much older than 1,500 years. 
There is also one underground room covered with huge stone blocks and some of the big phalluses. Some of them are up to 8 meters, very heavy. And the mountain from where these rocks are transported and made is 60 kilometers up and down away from the area where these palaces are now. So also here we have the question, how did they make them and how did they transport them?